Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to uh, address this speech, especially to the students at Frontenac Secondary School in Kingston and the Islands, whom I met uh, last week. I want to say thank you for being interested in government and sorry for the future taxes you may have to pay to fix the problems that we create or ignore today because we do not think carefully enough about legislation. To the people of Kingston Islands, I ask, would you like your tax dollars to be well spent? And would you like your government to make good laws? Well, in Canada, you elect a person to go to Ottawa and check on what the Prime Minister and his government is doing. You elect a person to go to Ottawa to study what the government proposes to do with your money and what laws the government proposes that you should obey. You elect a person to go to Ottawa to voice approval or disapproval, to vote for or against what the government wants to do. And you should get to know how your member of parliament voted. Now we have a majority here in the House of Commons. Uh, we have a majority, the government has a majority in the House, it has a majority in every committee. Uh, so it can and does win every vote that it wants to. So if the government can win every vote, why bother voting on everything? Isn't it kind of like a force out in baseball? Why don't we just take all of the government spending proposals, all the new laws, and put them into one big bill, one omnibus bill, have one vote and be done with it. Well, this is kind of what's happening with the bills to implement the budget and all the extra stuff uh, that the current government is, being, is adding to these budget bills. And, and let me give you some numbers. Between 1995 and 2000, according to, uh, to Ned Franks, uh, the Budget Implementation Act averaged about 12 pages in length, just 12. From 2001 to 2008, they averaged 139 pages. In 2009, however, the budget implementation legislation added up to 580 pages. And in 2010, 880 pages. And most recently, this year, 450 pages. So it's really grown a lot. And more importantly, the bills contain not just minor amendments to implement the budget, as it was the case uh, 10 years ago, but more importantly, uh, the budget contains all sorts of unrelated subject matter. And that's what we're, we're, we're complaining about today. The budget itself is complicated enough. You know, it's got changes to taxes, which are very complicated, financial regulations, which require a lot of expertise. We need to look at it carefully. We need to ask experts. We need to check for problems and unintended consequences. Instead of paying up later with expensive court costs uh, and hoping that the courts uh, would fix legislation or having to go back and pass entirely new legislation. Normally, we're supposed to research bills carefully and see if there's anything special to say from the point of view of our constituents. We're supposed to listen to any reaction from our constituents, listen to expert witnesses in relevant committees, and make amendments to any bill to improve it. But when bills like the omnibus bills contain so many things, and we don't have the time to review all of them, and omnibus bills for the budget have been like that for the last four years. Special items do not go to their respective committee for examination by experts, and we don't give bills the scrutiny that they deserve and that our constituents deserve. Now, uh, conservative members of parliament who uh, opposite, who dutifully obey their whip and show up and read the words on their cards and vote as they are told and vote for the budget bill are voting to spend the tax dollars of Canadians and make laws blindly. As Rick Mercer says, it's simply like reading uh, online where you say, by clicking the I accept button, you agree to be bound and proceeding to click without thinking, which is what we do online. But what we shouldn't do on such important matters as spending the billions of dollars of taxes and making laws uh, that, uh, that Canadians have to obey. I think we're elected and paid to do more than just click the I accept button. Now, in a majority government, the government may win every vote, but it is Parliament's duty to listen, to study, to criticize, and to suggest improvements, and to communicate the problems back to Canadians. And some sometimes, when Canadians realize that there's an important problem, they do speak up, and a majority government does change what it does. But that can't happen with an omnibus bill. It's very difficult with all these matters of, under, of different subjects crowded into one bill and pushed through in such a short time. 
it is our duty to talk about how each step the government takes will affect Canadians and affect our constituents. And we should be able to vote on unrelated items separately. The people we represent should be able to know how we vote on each item. Our constituents, for example, will want to know the following. Where do you stand on eliminating environmental reviews? Where do you stand on pension changes? Where do you stand on food safety inspections? Where do you stand on federal fair wages? Where do you stand on cross-border law enforcement? Where do you stand on the SEEDS Act? Where do you stand on foreign ownership of small telecoms companies? Where do you stand on changes to the parole board? Now, all of these things, all of these very different things, were in the omnibus bill this past summer. And by burying all of these things in one bill and having a single vote, members of parliament have no option but to vote for some things that are bad for constituents or against some things that are good for their constituents. And the funny thing is that later on uh, in the future, the conservatives will stand up and say, oh, you can't criticize us on issue X because you voted against legislation where we tried to do something about X. When the truth is, the legislation contained all sorts of other bad things, bad changes that we had to vote against. So let us then agree. Let us then agree, Mr. Speaker, with a younger version of the member for Calgary Southwest, who is now our Prime Minister. Let us agree with him from another time, back in 1994, from a time when there was, I believe, still a bit of small c principled conservatism in him. And he criticized omnibus bills, and he said that dividing the bill into several components would allow members to represent views of their constituents on each of the different components of the bill. Mr. Speaker, let us today change the way we do business in this House for the benefit of Canadians so that we may, as we pray every morning, make good laws and wise decisions. And let's do that for the benefit of the young students to whom this speech is dedicated, to the young students at Frontenac Secondary School in Kingston and the Islands, so that they won't have to pay higher taxes to fix the problems that we create or ignore because we do not think about new laws or how to spend tax dollars if we do not think about them carefully enough. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.